onboard air and pressurized water in my Jeep. And uh, I'm going to build a plate right here. There's access for the water pump and to plumb the air through and uh, build a plate to mount. Both of those items have seen several designs on the web of what other people have done. Um, there were some really good ideas and I'm going to improve on some others. Uh, so uh, stick with me and uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I already have um, the air compressor mounted uh, under the hood and I've plumbed the air back here. I've also run uh, switches uh, from my switches back to here the, uh, the power control for the uh, pressurized water and I've got my air line and um, there's a little access point right here um, that I can run them through uh, back to this spot um, so I'll run them through here and then I need to do a little fabrication and cutting um, inside of the, the tail light here and cutting through the fender so um, I have not done this before this is all new to me so I might make, make some mistakes along the way but hopefully there aren't too many and you can learn with me Okay, now I'm going to lay out my faucet bib and mark the hole, uh, which I will either bolt or screw on, and then I will also place the air chuck. Because I uh, <clears throat> used oil to cut the part, I'm going to use some denatured alcohol to clean it up before I paint it. So I like to use this, um, this epoxy paint, it's self-priming. Uh, it, I've used it to paint roll bars on ATVs and razors and they wear very well. Um, so this is a nice paint and as you can see I'm using my sterile paint booth out here in the wild outdoors next to the garage. Okay, so drilling holes for the <coughs> for the insert here. Uh, I just drilled uh, these holes with a hole saw. Now I'm going to come back and clean these up with a little bit with the Jigsaw. Okay, so I have all the the holes for the rivets marked. 
and I'm using a smaller drill bit, a 1 8 drill bit, to just drill pilot holes here uh, versus using the actual size of the drill bit for the rivet. Um, one, it allows me to better center the hole, and two, it makes drilling easier and it doesn't get so hot as you're trying to drill a larger hole through. And now I've raided the kids' paint uh, supplies and got a little uh, paintbrush, and I've sprayed a little bit of uh, enamel, um, the primerless enamel that I like to use to spray parts. Um, and I'm just gonna coat these holes so that they don't rust. These are gonna be covered up so they don't need to be pretty. Um, I think it's a good idea just to put some sort of coating over these holes that have been drilled. Okay. Just doing a little testing here before I mount everything up. I've filled the bumper with water. It's pulling it down nicely. It's getting the whole system kind of primed. <coughs> all right, let's take a little tour before we put it all together. Let me get a light. Um, so we've got the air and the water lines plumbed out. I've got a little duct tape on there just to prevent any chafing against the holes in there. Um, inside, I've mounted the pump and the, uh, I don't know if you call that a firewall, but uh, just the, <coughs> the wall inside the little cavity here. Um, and I've wired that. Uh, as I showed earlier, the air and the power lines for the pump are coming through the grommet in the top of the rear fender here. And then let me show you what I did <coughs> down beneath to run the water lines. So, I'll start over here. Um, so this tank the tanks are plumbed together, so uh, I've put some 400 degree heat tape around this line so that I can keep it at the, the, the lower level of the tank. I didn't want to run it higher to have to overcome gravity problems as I fill both tanks. Um, but as you see, I'm just running along the sway bar with uh, zip ties. And then over here on this side, I've just kind of coiled it around to this tank. More heat tape because I'm near the exhaust outlet here. A couple things I've added. There's a T here that's running to uh, uh, just a open cap so that I can uh, drain it in the winter. We've got pretty harsh winters here in Utah, so I'll be able to drain that down. And then there's another T, so that T runs to the drain, and then this T runs up into the fender, and I've just uh, carved out a little corner of that bottom plastic plate uh, to be able to run that up through inside of the fender. So that's the setup. Let's put it all together now.
Now I'm going to apply a little uh, <clears throat> black silicone gasket maker just to seal off this plate before I put the rivets in. Okay, full tour of onboard water and air. So under the dash we've got the twin ARB compressor mounted on the uh, Moore uh, bracket here. The S-Pod um, with the switches wired. Uh, both the water and the air are wired to switches. Here we've got switches uh, five and six. The compressor comes with an ARB switch. Um, so we've got the water and air both turned on. And around the back here, is the setup. So let's test them. So you can hear neither pump is running. That means they're both compressed. There are no leaks. Um, so we'll turn on the water. That running water, at least five gallons of it. And then the air, I'm gonna plug in this hose. It's gonna take a second, the pump will kick on to pressurize the hose. So you hear the pump. And I'll grab the air chuck here as soon as it's pressurized. So it'll it'll uh, kick off. Now the, the hose is pressurized completely and we can Oh, one-handed. Not so good. There we go. Now we're inflating the tires. Pumps running. Pretty sweet. Okay, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please subscribe. I'll be creating videos every time I create something new.